Coming up next on Hooten's Arkansas Football. Highlights from the eighth week of the high school season, including a showdown at Siloam Springs. A shocker in Searcy, plus Pulaski Academy at the pit. Oh, that's groovy. Hooten's Arkansas Football is next. Now, Arkansas's most watched sports show, Hooten's Arkansas Football. Hello and welcome to Hooten's Arkansas Football. Wow, the eighth week of the high school season produced some big games. And we have highlights from some of the biggest from all across our state. And in the next 30 minutes right here on Hooten's Arkansas Football, every team down in Saline County is having a great year. Benton, Bryant, and Boxite probably all going to make the playoffs. And we will begin in Saline County, our Class 5A highlights, with the Benton Panthers playing host to the Pine Bluff Zebras in a big one from the 5A South. And our Class 5A highlights, as we get started tonight, are brought to you by Big Red Fina. On a muggy moonlit night, the men who wear the stripes, the Pine Bluff Zebras in Saline County to battle Benton. And Pine Bluff's defensive secondary had a field day in the first half, intercepting one Benton pass after another, including this toss intercepted and returned by Michael Dove. But Pine Bluff couldn't do anything with it. The Zebras had trouble with turnovers too, and Benton would score first. Josh Langley sets up the screen nicely, and watch the sweet spin move by Benton's Donovan Clark, the junior, making the move and Benton was up 7 to nothing late in the first quarter. Pine Bluff's first touchdown would follow another Benton blunder. This time the snap from center bounces back to the punter and Pine Bluff is going to take advantage of some great field position. Sophomore quarterback Barry McDonnelly. He'll hand off to another sophomore. That's Eric Wallace fighting for the touchdown. It was 7-6 to six at halftime, but that's all the Z's would get as Benton intercepted Pine Bluff four times in the first half, including this one by tough man Zach Teeter. And Benton goes on to beat Pine Bluff for the first time in 13 years. Final score, Benton 20, Pine Bluff 6. Up in Washington County, the Fayetteville Purple Dogs play in host to the Rogers Mounties. Fayetteville trying to take one more step toward the playoffs. Rogers welcoming back its standout quarterback, Johnny Brewer, but this would not be Brewer's night. Fayetteville's dark side defense pressured him all night long. Mark Potter making the stop there. And Brewer was intercepted five times on the night. Corey McClendon returns this one for a Fayetteville touchdown. Fayetteville led 13 to nothing at halftime and would pour it on in the second half, rushing the ball 49 times for 197 yards. Final score, Fayetteville 33, Rogers 6. Hooten's Arkansas Football Class 5A Game of the Week had undefeated Sylvan Hills looking to stay in first place in the 5A East up at Cabot on Friday. The Bears on the move, quarterback Arthur Cooley looking downfield, but he's smothered by Cabot's defense. In the second quarter, here comes those Cabot Panthers, and there goes Joey Jocelyn ripping a 40-yard run right up the gut on Sylvan Hills' defense. A few plays later, it's Double J again. Joey Jocelyn, this time 30-yard touchdown jump that put Cabot up 7-0 at halftime and the Panthers would fight right back into the conference race, knocking off undefeated Sylvan Hills. Final score, Cabot 17, the Bears 7. Cabot won in overtime at Searcy four weeks ago. Friday night, Searcy still looking for its first win of the season, playing host to playoff hopeful Jonesboro. But Searcy looked more like a postseason contender. Lions senior Blake Robertson getting loose down the sideline for 33 yards. He would later score on a one-yard run, and Searcy was up by seven. On their next possession, the Lions and senior quarterback Chris Bryant. He goes to the air. Scott Hudgens with a nice catch and run for Searcy. And a little bit later, Bryant finds Matt Cramlin and the sophomore does the rest. The long gainer would set up a 21-yard field goal by Tanner Gibbs, and Searcy was not finished. Just six seconds later, it's Robertson with the pick and the return. Searcy put Jonesboro away with 17 first quarter points and gets its first win of the season. Final score, Lions 17, Jonesboro 7. From Searcy back to Saline County now. The Bryant Hornets playing host to Parkview. Zach Holland's nice putt return would set up Zach Holland's touchdown catch from Anthony Mask. The Hornets' Zach Kellum would plow in for another TD just a few minutes later. Bryant led Parkview 35 to nothing at halftime. And remember, the Hornets are only a field goal away from being undefeated. Final score, Bryant 42, Parkview 7. The North Little Rock Charging Wildcats and preseason number one Little Rock Central, two of the more talented teams in the state, tied for the lead in the 5A Central Conference and getting it on north of the river. Central would score first, 
After Clark Irwin's pass to Stewart Franks, Irwin would keep on the option and the Tigers are up 7-0. Ensuing kickoff. North Little Rock Fred McElwee. Did I mention the talent these two teams have? Look at fabulous Fred McElwee. Going, going, 100 plus yards. And North Little Rock has tied it up. It's seven to seven. Hold on to your hat, Cowboys. We've got a ball game. A little bit later, Central going back to the air. Oh no, are you kidding me? Brian Stickney going the other way with the Oski. North Little Rock led this thing 13 to seven at halftime but its offense would fail to score on the night against Central's Vaughn and D. Final score, Tigers 35, North Little Rock 13. And here is Hooters Arkansas Football updated Class 5A rankings brought to you by the Arkansas Army National Guard. Springdale was a 35-point favorite over Van Buren on Friday night. The final score, Springdale 35, Van Buren 0. Little Rock Central holds at number 2 after their big win at North Little Rock. West Memphis moves up to number 3. The Blue Devils are in the driver's seat of the 5A East, will likely be the number 1 seed from that conference, which means West Memphis could play Central or Bryant in the second round and then probably play host to Springdale if they could advance to the semifinals. Northside drops to number five, then it's Fayetteville up to number six, followed by Cabot. Sylvan Hills down to eight. Little Rock Catholics in the top ten. Takes your Cannons number 11, followed by Southside. Russell up to number 13, and looking like it'll make the playoffs by winning its final four games for the second year in a row. Benton's up to number 14, followed by El Dorado. Those two teams will play next at El Dorado. Rogers drops to 16, followed by Lake Hamilton, Jonesboro, Pine Bluff, and Conway cracks the top 20 for the first time since the preseason. Then it's Van Buren, the Bombers, Jacksonville, the Cardinals, and Bentonville. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 4A highlights are next. And we begin our Class 4A highlights at unbeaten Kulasti Robinson. Homecoming out on Highway 10, the unbeaten Senators playing host to winless Arkadelphia in the first quarter. That's Earl Turner busting loose. E.T. phones home. Turner, 70 yards for the touchdown. Jonathan Dell was injured. Earl filled in and would finish with 165 yards on the night. Arkadelphia would fight back though. Look at this, Mario Jones, 29 yards for the touchdown. And Arkadelphia had tied it up at six. But Robinson's D wouldn't allow the Badgers to sniff the end zone again. And in this election year, the Senators are still unbeaten. Final score, Robinson 36, Arkadelphia 6. Pulaski Oak Grove's only loss this season was in the opener to Robinson. In conference play, the Hornets all alone though atop the 4A Southeast standings, playing host to cross it on Friday night. And the boys from Ashley County he did a good job containing Darren McFadden, the standout running back for Oak Grove, punished, roughed up a little bit by Crossett, and held to just 125 yards. But it wouldn't matter. Oak Grove's big fullback, Travis Rogers, he gets in, short score, Oak Grove up 7 0. Later, McFadden, you knew he would make the highlight reel somehow, some way. And after the bounce on the punt, he is taken off for his second touchdown return of the year. And as long as McFadden stays healthy, the Hornets will create a lot of buzz in Class 4A. Final score, Oak Grove 41, crossing 7. High Flying Siloam Springs faced heavy rain and the heavyweights of Class 4A, number one Alma Friday night. But the boys with the big S on their helmet struck first. Park Dinger boots a 28 yard field goal. Siloam was up three to nothing. But those were the only points Siloam would get Friday night. Alma took the lead for good early in the second quarter. Quarterback Joseph Medeiros, him crash in from the one. Alma was up seven to three. The Airedales limited Siloam Springs to 173 yards of offense. Siloam did have one touchdown called back, but Alma is still the number one team in 4A. Final score, Airedales 26, Siloam Springs 3. And we'll wrap up our 4A coverage at BB, where the Badgers and Green County Tech try to keep their slim playoff hopes alive. Green County Tech had taken advantage of two BB special team miscues and led 23 to 19 in the fourth quarter. Senior fullback Courtney Lee had 175 yards on 25 carries for the Eagles. BB was down by four and needs a long drive. Wes Lamb, he passed for 214 yards and three touchdowns. He hits Ryan Longo for the short game. Then that's Nathan Lamb with the reception. The Badgers are still alive, but Green County Tech would bow up on BB and kill the Badgers' postseason hopes with a pair of sacks, including this one by Jared Hale. Green County Tech cools off the mild upset. Final score, Eagles 23, BB 19. We got two more weeks. Now you got to stick together, all right? Stick together, keep working, all right? Keep getting better, keep working, all right? Let's come in here, let's have a prayer, let's go over and do our skill song. Oh, it was a big win for us. We've been, everybody's been down and saying we couldn't do it. 
We pulled it off and just gave it everything we had and come up with a win. And here is Hooters Arkansas football updated Class 4A rankings. Alma strong and secure at number one, followed by Robinson and Greenwood. The Bulldogs will play host to Siloam Springs and Alma to finish the regular season. Win is number four, followed by Oak Grove. The Hornets move in the top five and are averaging 42 points per game. Batesville should finish second in the 4A East. Siloam Springs is down to number seven. Bologna will likely finish fourth in the West, and that means the Eagles are likely headed to win in the first round. Monticello moves into the top ten and plays at Oak Grove in two weeks for the conference title in the Southeast. Whitehall's number 11 and the Bulldogs will play host to Stuttgart next with a playoff spot on the line. Hope is number 13 followed by West Helena and Moralton. The Devil Dogs won't make the playoffs this year but they are loaded with some sophomores. Marion is 16 followed by Fair. The Golden Goblins cross it in Paragould. Paragould is fighting Marion for a playoff spot in the East. Hot Springs Lakeside has won two in a row, but won't make the postseason in the Southwest. Green County Tech up to number 23. Mills has lost three heartbreakers this year, and Magnolia rounds out the top 25. Now the ConocoPhillips Spirit Student of the Week. Batesville High Bands member Todd Weaver is a serious trombonist. About eighth grade, I really started to play trombone to understand what it means to play trombone the passion. Todd takes that same passion to the classroom where he maintains a 4.0 grade point average despite staying busy most nights with band duties. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of skill and juggling. Um, making lists really helps. Making schedules for each day. Congratulations to Batesville Junior Todd Weaver, our Conoco Phillips 66 Spirit Student of the Week. Nominations for the ConocoPhillips Spirit Student of the Week are welcomed and can be made by logging on to Hootens.com or by stopping in ConocoPhillips Stations of Arkansas. And we begin our Class 3A highlights with number one Central Arkansas Christian playing host to Little Rock Christian. And CAC was up 35 to 13 in the second quarter and the Mustangs were not done. Standout quarterback Jesse Gates, he hangs it up for an easy six points. John Setonian on the reception. CAC was up 42 to 13. Gates had had a hand and six touchdowns. Trent Morgan also had a big night. Three long kick returns and this short touchdown as it crashes in. CAC holds on to its top ranking. Final score, Mustangs 49, Little Rock Christian 21. Next week, CAC will play host to Pulaski Academy. The Bruins at Boxite on Friday night, and the pit is always good to Boxite. The Miners and Andrew Ring take a short touchdown run, and look at this. Boxite's up on PA 6 to nothing, but there is no panic in the Bruins. Sophomore quarterback, Stephen Lux, he dumps the screen pass to Aaron Langford in his first season to play football. All kinds of green in front of him. 70 yards for the score. Lux would throw for seven touchdown passes on the night. The next position, he's going to find Stephen Newell for the score. Final score, Pulaski Academy, 63. Boxite, 36. What time is it? Game time! What time is it? Game time! And he throws it out! Woo! And he throws it out! Woo! 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 Up at Mayflower, the Eagles pump playing host to Lone Oak. Lone Oak jumped on the scoreboard quickly in the first quarter. Latrell Doss making it look easy. Jack Rabbit six, Mayflower zero. But the Eagles would come right back. Geo Joshua running for his fourth touchdown of the season. That tied it up at six. But Lone Oak would turn this thing into a track meet. It's Doss, the Hoss. He breaks three tackles and can keep on running. Lone Oak back into the playoffs for the second straight year. Final score, Jack Rabbit's 40, Mayflower 18. Now to Northwest Arkansas, homecoming night at Prairie Grove. The Tigers playing host to undefeated Green Forest. Bad choice for a homecoming date. Green Forest is Naaman Warren. Would get loose on touchdown runs of 73 and 42 yards as Green Forest runs all over Prairie Grove. Green Forest now 8-0 on the season. Final score, Green Forest 42, Prairie Grove 6. And Hooten's AAA coverage ends at Shiloh Christian, where the Saints and Gravit played Friday night for playoff positioning. Shiloh quickly took control. Senior linebacker Brad Mays intercepts, returns it 22 yards for the touchdown. Shiloh Christian quarterback Matt Simpson chipped in too, running and passing for a combined 117 yards and a pair of touchdowns. And the Saints are marching into the postseason, most likely as the number two seed from the one AAA. Final score, Shiloh Christian 35, Gravit 0. 
And here is Hooton's Arkansas Football updated Class 3A rankings. There are no changes in the top dozen. CAC's won. Boonville is 8-0 and has yet to be tested. Pulaski Academy plays host to Central Arkansas Christian next. Nashville's four and Atkins is five. And it's Ashdown, which survived Fountain Lake, but only by seven points on Friday. Dollarway intercepted the pass at the two-yard line as time expired on Friday to survive Hamburg by eight points. Warren's defense is playing better. The Lumberjacks held McGee to seven points. Rivercrest and Harrisburg from Northeast Arkansas round out the top ten. Then it's the Hillbillies, Star City, and Osceola. Also from Northeast Arkansas, the Seminoles escaped Lee County with an eight-point win over Mariana Friday. Newport's number four. 14. The Greyhounds play Pocahontas next with the chance at winning the 2 AAA for the second straight season. Green Forest is 8-0 and should finish the regular season undefeated. Then it's Fountain Lake and Lone Oak, which will finish third in the 6 AAA and head to Southeast Arkansas in the first round. Shallow Christian put the mercy rule on Gravit Friday night. There's Dardanelle and Pokey. Poxy has a dandy football team. The Mustangs have lost two games by a total of five points this season. Dover's number 22, followed by Mountain View, Mina, and Farmington, which moves into the top 25 for the first time this year. Now, the United States Marines Scholar Athlete of the Week. To get back on the football field in 2004, Warriors Peter Billings had to overcome two knee injuries and a torn ACL. His character's been greatly tested as far as his knee injuries, plus keeping his grades up and success on the field and hopefully success at the next level. Um, he's just really persevered through a lot. I play defensive end, so I get to get a lot of tackles, and I just like doing that. It's just my thing. I don't like scoring touchdowns. I just like hitting people really hard and taking them to the ground. It's my favorite part of the game. Accumulating a 4.5 GPA, the future is wide open for this warrior. Congratulations to Peter Billings, the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Hey, Little Rock Christians having a great year in their first season as a member of Class 3A, but may not make the playoffs. Had a tough loss against Bauxite earlier this season, and then, of course, that loss to number one CAC on Friday night. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, Class 2A highlights. More of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by State Farm. Play as hard as you can. Give all your effort, no minimal mistakes, and we'll check the scoreboard. The number three ranked East Poinsett County Warriors stepping out of conference play Friday night at Augusta, where the Red Devils were looking homecoming sharp. East Poinsett County, though, recovered an Augusta fumble on the first play and would score on the second play. Senior quarterback Spencer Harston hits Ken Madden for the 35-yard touchdown. Augusta would turn it right back over to East Poinsett County, and again, the Warriors would cash in. This time, it's senior Eric Campbell going 17 yards down the sidelines to score. East Poinsett County was up early, 13 to nothing. Augusta, though, would strike back. It was homecoming night. Patrick Neville's feeling it, the junior, with the handoff, and he's gone. But that would be all of the scoring for Augusta on its homecoming. Madden would return the ensuing kickoff, and the Warriors would run away with this one. Final score, undefeated in East Poinsett County, 43, Augusta, 6. Now, big game in the 4AA Conference. Arkansas Baptist playing host to Hazen on a hazy Friday night in West Little Rock. It was tied up at 6 late in the first half, but here comes Baptist. Quarterback, Red Hatcher, he's going to bang in for a touchdown. I put Baptist up 12 to six, the two-point toss would fail if the Eagle defense would hang tough the rest of the night. Paul Bucari controlled the line of scrimmage, also kicked the field goal for Baptist, and Baptist dunks Hazen to stay in first place in the league, while the Hornets drop to third place in the conference. Final score, Arkansas Baptist 15, Hazen 12. The underdog Elaine Panthers were playing at number five Harding Academy Friday night up in Searcy. Looked like a yawner on paper, and Elaine was down early, but the Panthers scored two quick touchdowns, including this one from their defense. Look at Elaine's sophomore, Joel Queenie, scooping and scoring. That cut Harding's lead to 35 to 14. But the Wildcats would come right back. Junior quarterback, Zach Treble, he spins away from pressure, rolls to his right, and then threads the perfect pass to Michael Key. Harding's Brad London, a sophomore, gets loose for a nice gain after that, all the way down to the Elaine 27. Treble, a couple of plays later, goes way up top to junior Kurt Adams for this touchdown, and Harding Academy rolls. The Wildcats travel to Barton next week for a key 6 AA matchup. Final score, Harding Academy 49, Elaine 14. 
Part of the Any Surprise is Friday night as Hooton's top five whip teams ranked in the bottom 25, including number one Ryzen, which handed Woodlawn a reality check by bouncing the Bears 55 to nothing. Lavaca moves up to number six this week with a convincing 27 to 12 win at Mountainburg. Derricks will stick at number seven, followed by Mountainburg falling down two spots. The Dragons must forget about their loss to Lavaca on Friday night because Charleston comes to town next and Hooton's Arkansas football TV cameras will be there. Junction City held Hampton to four first downs and a 42-6 blowout Friday night. The Greenland Pirates play Speedy Lavaca next. The second 10 starts with Hughes and Barton. Barton will welcome Harding Academy and an ESPN Timeless crew to Frank McClellan Field next. There's Bearden and 4AA leading Arkansas Baptist. Javaria Forbes ran for 245 yards and four touchdowns Friday night as Foreman leveled Spring Hill by 20 points in a key 7AA West matchup. The next five consist of Spring Hill, Mount Ida, Jesseville, Perryville, and the Hector Wildcats, which are starting to click. Senior fullback Chris Miranda carried 14 times for 190 yards and three touchdowns in a big win over Bigelow, 33-7. And rounding out the top 25, it's the Mustangs, Hornets, Wolves, Gurdon Go Devils, and the Eudora Badgers. For our State Farm Player of the Week for the eighth week of the high school season, we head back to North Little Rock. The Charging Wildcats play at host to Little Rock Central. The Tigers had just scored to go up 7-0 when Brent McElwee returns the ensuing kickoff 99 yards for a touchdown. That helped North Little Rock to a 13-7 halftime lead, and that is our State Farm Play of the Week. Hey, thanks again for watching Hooton's Arkansas Football tonight. We look forward to seeing you again next week at the same time when we'll have highlights of the ninth week of the high school season. And we look forward to seeing you then right here on Hooton's Arkansas Football. You've been watching Arkansas's most watched sports show, Hooton's Arkansas Football.